I have an Arduino board with several devices attached to it that I would like to control from a PC. We can do it with Arduino's serial monitor, but that's too much work and it makes me remember too many codes. There is, however, a better way using Visual C Sharp from Microsoft. Using clicky buttons and scrolly bars and a colorful GUI, it is a lot more efficient and easy to operate than the serial monitor. Can we make this Windows GUI work? We'll see on today's episode of... For this video, I've added some LEDs, a servo, a pot, and a push button to an Arduino board just to have something to control. Using these devices, we can explore sending signals and digital data and analog data back and forth from the PC to the Arduino. To make it easy on ourselves, we'll start by controlling the onboard LED connected to pin 13 by sending on and off commands from the GUI. Then we will move on to progressively more sophisticated controls in the following videos. So, let's start by opening up an Arduino project and also start Visual Studio. The Arduino IDE is pretty much ready to go, but as you can see, we will have to go through a couple of steps with the Visual Studio program before we are ready to go. So let's get that out of the way. Click on the Create a New Project button, the bottom one in the lower right hand corner, to create a new project for us to program. Now we have to select the programming language we want to use. In our case, we want to use C Sharp, so from the drop down menu at the top of the window, we'll select C Sharp. Now you can see that it's C-sharp programming there. We have to select the type of C-sharp program that we want to write and there are many kinds that you could write with Visual Studio. We want to write a Windows Forms app and you'll have to scroll down a little ways for it and you'll see it right here. It's several down. Windows Form app and we will highlight that. If you have trouble finding it you can always go to the search window, type Windows Form in it, and then it will narrow your search considerably. So, now we've got the application type that we want to use all selected. Let's now go click the Next button, where we'll fill in the information as to the name of the solution that we want and where we want to save it. So in our case, we want to call this, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it Arduino GUI and then save it at some place on my computer. I'll select, I'll allow it to go to its default and then it will give it a default solution name which is the same as the project name and then click create. When you click create you should get a blank C-sharp form and an empty Windows project for us to program. You should now see the Visual Studio Editor with an empty Windows form on it and you should also have an empty Arduino project open. The first thing we must do is to set up serial communications between the Arduino and the PC. To do this, we need to enter programming in both of the IDEs. So, let's do the Arduino programming first. In the setup section, we will put the code to initialize the serial port. Entering the command serial.begin with an argument of 9600 will set up the serial port to open when the program is executed. We will use the rest of the default values for the serial port which are 8-bit, no parity, and one stop bit. 
We can do this because C Sharp also uses the same default values and everything will sync up well. Also, we need the name of the COM port the Arduino uses later in the C Sharp program. So let's look it up now. Pull down the Tools menu and look at the port name by scrolling down to where it says Port. And in my case, it says Port is COM6. So I will remember COM6 for later. That's it for the Arduino. Now we have to do the same thing for C Sharp. Looking at the form, you will notice that to the left, there is a selection for a toolbox. Clicking it will open a menu of all of the available controls and GUI elements available for us to use. Click on the push pin at the top of the menu to keep the tools menu open. First, we need to set up the serial port. Scroll down in all windows forms all Windows Forms to Serial Port in the S's. Click on it and then click on the form. You will notice that this control is not visible on the form but you can see it in the section below. The Serial Port is not a visual control. It works in the background running in a separate thread. Click on the serial port control to highlight it and then look at its properties in the lower right hand corner of the programming environment. You will see that the baud rate is already set to 9600 along with all of the other settings that we just talked about. Also, we need to match the serial port that the Arduino uses that we looked up before. So set the port name down here to match that selection. In my case, it is COM6. Now, with those properties set, we need to enable the serial port for our c -sharp program. To do this, we have to open a code window by either pressing F7 or selecting from the view menu the code option. A new tab opens with the basic framework for a program. Now we can initialize the serial port. This is done in the form function. Click to add another line of programming after the initialize components and enter the command serial port 1 dot open with an open and close paren and then a semicolon. That command will initialize and open the serial port at runtime. That's it for the serial port setup. Finally, we can make the form functional. Our objective is to have a button we can press to light the LED on the Arduino pin 13. So let's do that. Click on the design tab to view the form. In the toolbox, click on the button control at the top, the button control, and then click on the form to drop it in place. Do this procedure again for a second button. Click on button, drop it on the form. We can move them close to each other. Let's make the first button, turn the LED on. So click on the button to highlight it. Then go to the properties window and change the text property to say turn on. Scroll down to the T's, it will say 
text property is right now button one. Highlight that and say turn on. That will be the label on the button. Now scroll up to the top to the name properties and change that to on button. Okay. The name property is the way we will reference that button in code. It's like a variable name. Now change the same properties on the other button to off button. Click on it since we're right here. Change the name to off button. And then scroll down to the text properties and change it from button two to turn off. The GUI part of the project is complete. So now we have to program the events that will send commands to the Arduino. Double click the turn on button. The code window opens and you will see that Visual Studio has created a function stub for the click event for the on button. We will add code to this event to send a command to the Arduino when the button is clicked. In between the braces, click add a comment that says send command to the Arduino to turn pin 13 on. Okay, follow that with the command serial port 1 to identify the serial port we're talking about dot write which will be the command that sends a string to the serial port and follow that with the argument of a capital A in quotes. We will program the Arduino to turn the LED on when it receives a single character capital A. With this we are finished with the turn on button. Now program the turn off button the same way. Click on the forms tab to go back to the form then double click on the turn off button to create the code stub for the click event for the off button. We will do the same thing for the commands here except we will modify them to send a lowercase a. So the easiest way to do that is to just copy with a control C the code from the turn on button and modify the contents to just turn off the button or to indicate it turns it off and send it a lowercase a. At this point the C sharp program is complete. Now it's time for us to make the Arduino respond to the commands. First off we need to set up pin 13 as an output. In the setup function, we'll add pin mode 13 as an output. And that initializes pin 13 so that it will turn on and off the LED. Also, we need to create two variables for us to use to help decode the commands. So at the top, we will define a string called data to hold the information that gets transmitted, the string that gets transmitted from the PC. And then we'll create a char variable called D1 to hold the first character of that string. So we have the variables in place for us to use. Now, let's go ahead and program in the loop function all of the stuff that we need 
for catching the string and doing something with it. So first off, we need to check and make sure that there is a string available that got sent from the PC. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. So if the serial dot available function tells us that there is a string available, what do we want to do? Well, we want to put that string into data. So data equals serial dot read string function and then a semicolon. Okay, that will put the string in data. So, okay, so now that we have the string in data, let's strip off the first character because that is the code that will determine what device gets affected. So D1 is equal to data dot char at position zero. That will put the first character in D1. So we can test that character to see what we need to do with it. At this point, all we're going to do is turn on pin 13 LED. So we've already set up so that if it's a capital A, we turn it on. If it's a lowercase a, we turn it off. So we can take an if statement. If D1 is equal to a single character A, then we digital write to pin 13 a high to turn it on. Okay, that's all we do in that case. Else, if D1 is equal to a lowercase a, what we want to do is to digital write to pin 13 a low. That will turn the LED off. So that's all the code we need to decode the string and turn the LED on and off. Let's check and see if we've got the proper codes. If everything is good, it has compiled, so my program is fine. It's ready to go. And that's it for the programming. Compile, save, and download the program to the Arduino. Now return to the c -sharp program and click on the green arrow in the menu bar with the word Start immediately after it. That will open an active window with two buttons on it. Click the Turn On button and the light on the Arduino board on pin 13 will light. Turn off, click the Turn Off button and the pin 13 LED will turn off. That's all there is to it. We now have the hard work completed and a partially functional GUI control system upon which we can build. The next video in the series will extend this program to look at sending more data to the Arduino. Thank you for watching.